So um, I wanted to talk about uh, profile a little bit. And I uh, just realized this uh, Chinese axe has a four pound weight stamp, which is kind of cool. I basically uh, brought this out to uh, talk about a new axe profile and what they're like now. So they're almost all like this with these flat cheeks, no high center line. So that, that means that this part is uh, the same, uh, basically the same width as the ends. And so it's a little stickier like that, tiny bit stickier in the wood. It matters a lot more when you're splitting, which is what I'm gonna show you guys. So flat uh, modern axes are not to be confused with some uh, classic vintage axes that actually do have flat cheeks, but are still very valuable, uh, useful tools. Just not the best splitter. So I wouldn't use this for splitting anymore, I used to. But uh, I've come across some excellent splitters. And uh, this is one of my favorites. It's a, uh, it's kind of like a jersey pattern, but this is probably from P Pennsylvania. Oh wow, there's a, there was a little bug on the, on the lens. So look at the difference. Look at the difference, stubby, fatter in the cheeks with a high center line. And it's not like uh, super pronounced. It's just, you could tell that the edges are not as uh, thick as right over here in the middle. Put this down right here in the middle. So this is a wonderful profile. One part of uh, fatter cheeks is you're probably gonna have a shorter, uh, shorter length in your bit. So from the eye to the apex of your edge is gonna be shorter. It's just part of uh, where the weight goes. You know, you can't, you can't have everything. If, if this acts, with this length has fat cheeks, it's gonna weigh like six pounds or, or it could, depending on where they put the weight. But look at that permabond, blue permabond. Interesting, right? Uh, I did, when I was trying to uh, tell you guys what was happening in that last video, when the microphone went dead, I forgot to exp talk about this. Look, look at the like damage to the wood from that blunt edge it split it was just you know didn't penetrate enough so there is kind of a balance you want to be able to penetrate into the wood enough to wedge it enough to have that wedging action is the uh camera a little bright let's go down a little bit hopefully that'll be a little better yeah so you can see it's kind of frayed and messed up that's wasted energy basically but uh i think i proved the point that the edge of your axe is not so important when it comes to splitting go ahead bud go ahead, buddy go ahead, bud um let's try with the chinese axe this shouldn't be too hard to split to be honest i, I shouldn't have trouble even with this axe uh with the flat uh with the flat cheeks it's got it's got some thickness. You know what, now that I'm looking at it, it actually does kind of have a high center line. It's just not super pronounced. You can see this is a little bit less than like right over here. I just don't know if the actual center is higher. It's actually not that bad for a Chinese axe. You can see the, uh, the branding right there. That's really crazy that it has a, a, a four weight stamp right here. That's pretty interesting. I also notice how big the pole is, which is an American thing. At least the Americans started it via a large, uh, heavy pole. Go ahead, bud. Go ahead. So, uh, I never finished splitting this just cause I wanted to try out that goofy idea. Um, so let's see what happens. This, this handle seems like awful material. I'm not, I'm a little concerned about what this handle is even made of. <laughs> I don't know. It's lasted up to now. Oh wait, is that? Oh, it's super loose. I mean, there's, there's, you could see the space in the back. You can see the space in the back, but now that I'm looking at it, I can see that uh, the shelf is getting hit in the front too. Go ahead, buddy. Go. Go. Oh, yeah. Go, go ahead. You can have some. 
You got some wood. <laughs> gotta chew up some beach. So let's see what happens. I gotta be a little careful with this because it might uh, break off the handle. Oh boy. <laughs> Point proven, right guys? Flat cheeks without a wedgie profile. It's gonna be sticky. Same place. Watch this. Right out. I mean, that's, I don't know if there's a better example out there than that. But uh, I'm sure you think it's just Chinese axes that have that profile. No, almost all modern axes are even worse than this for splitting. When it comes to full size axes, splitting is not usually what the profile is made for anymore, which is unfortunate. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a big market out there. People, a lot of people are messing with firewood. A lot of people heat their homes with firewood. And uh, you don't always need a maul. I, I definitely disagree with that. You do not always need a maul. Not at all. I mean, some people are splitting just poplar. Straight grained walnut. This is more than enough. This is not even five pounds. Not even four and a half pounds, this uh, axe head. It's four and a quarter. And uh, with, with it not sticking, with it having a nice stubby, thick profile, this will kill most woods. You won't have much issue with this, watch. Right out. All right, now uh, I wanted to show you guys something. Let me find the page real quick. I should have remembered what page it was. This is an excellent book I have. I'll show you in a second. This is Axe Makers of North America. Wonderful book. Not everything's exactly correct in there. I've seen some uh, inconsistencies and some incorrect stuff, but it's just little minor details, honestly. Although, if you're a historian, maybe you'd say that should be corrected. I'm not that, I get things wrong all the time. So look at this right here. They, this is a Pex Boston barrel. Isn't that cool? Whoops. Okay, I'm so stupid. <laughs> He's an idiot. Why can't I do this? Okay, right here. Now you can see the, the waffle. It has a waffle uh, pattern on the back. And you can see the remnants of this one having a waffle on it. Hope you can see that, guys. Um, it does have branding. I've not been able to figure it out. So it might not be called. That's the thing about uh, calling patterns a certain thing. You can see the branding right here. Is that different companies actually named patterns differently. So it kind of confuses a lot of people. Um, they'll come out with their own thing. And it's already a name for something. And uh, it would be wrong for a different brand. Anyway, uh, last stuff I wanted to show you guys. Is uh, some cool... Um, hewing axes. These are broad axes. They're all double bevel. So this one's the most worn. It's a beady, which I was just reading in that book, uh, Axe Makers of North America, that beady started in like the very early 1800s. Really surprisingly early. I think it was before 1810. Beady was in business. What are you doing, bud? Look at the, the wear on this toe. You, you can't really see the branding too good but it's there it's there and then uh here's an, a really beautiful hammond with full bit pretty much full bit i would imagine and uh you can see it has an eight on it uh right here but it is it is faintly stamped the hammond is up here a lot of a lot of the old axes kind of go like that with their branding interestingly but um the coolest one I have in this kind of style, in this double bevel style, is this. Huge J. Hicks. My pal that uh, taught me a ton of stuff at the flea market uh, sold me this one for a really nice deal. He's a great guy, helped me out so much. And uh, because I like this so much, he, he gave it to me. 
huge. I would say eight or eight inch bit, maybe. And look at the like patina on this bad boy. Crazy. I don't know if I showed you the deep stamp. Deep stamp. Not going to get lost in history with the stamp that deep. That's one thing people don't talk about is, uh, and I'll hear Axe Yankee from Instagram talk about this, uh, Josh, a.k.a. Axe Yankee. Um, some companies just made really light stamps. Um, this stamp looked like it was probably pretty light when it was made in the factory. You just barely see it. Wish I knew what it said. It's unfortunate that I'm not too, I'm not like the best with that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. But here's my only clue about what this axe is, is that it has that eight. It has an eight. I don't know if it's the same. Uh, here, let's see. What was it, the Hammond? No, it's, yeah, yeah, the Hammond. You tell me, are those eights? similar there's the eight on this one and there's the eight on this one what do you guys think does that mean maybe it's a Hammond cool axe man such a cool axe and you know when you could use an axe that's over a hundred years old all the time I mean it's one of your favorite users what does that say about what these people were how these were used back in the day do you think this was a user back in the day? I think people were splitting with these back in the day. Once they got, maybe the bit was a little longer. Uh, that is something about old axes that I've forgot to mention is that, sure, uh, America invented these shorter bit, heavy pulled axes, but they were also used up super quick in some instances. I was reading in one book, uh, these things were used in a month. It was used up in a month, sharpened enough to be thrown out and to be replaced in one month. Isn't that amazing? So it's possible that we just don't come by longer bit old axes just because how they were used. They used to get sharpened up real quick and worn down. Um, but for the most part, I do believe that older axes are thicker and with heavier uh, poles, but that's also after the uh, colonial trade axe. Remember how I, how I wanted to find that axe article? Uh, what was that axe article called? Let's look through my phone, guys. I'll, I'll have to edit the hell out of this video, huh? The American axe, was it better? So yeah, th this article explained that uh, the colonial trade axe was a very long bit without a very heavy pull. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, this is that article. Oh, let me turn up the brightness on this bad boy. I'll have to talk about this one day. It's about four pages, not very long. You can see I highlighted some of it and I actually, funny enough, I sent this to a few people that asked for it. And some of those highlights are complete bullshit and they don't belong. <laughs> I didn't know how to undo them. <laughs> so uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to study this and, and become a smarter human being. And uh, we'll talk about it eventually. I, it's been months, I know. I'm just scared to mess it up because I'm not the most studious guy, you know. Not the sharpest tool in the American axe shed. So uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching.